This video is brought to you by Cooper City Realty. We are Cooper City. All right, so these problems, this one in particular, they're pretty easy, they're not difficult. All you have to know is remember this equation, I plus A D squared. Now I can change, I change is based on the shape of what we're dealing with, triangles or circles or rectangles. They all have different type of I equation in this bigger equation. But for now, today, we're just working with rectangles on this problem. So in terms of rectangles, the I is just going to be BH to the third over 12. Usually in the exam or the final, your teacher will give you what the I is going to be. If it's a circle, it's different, that kind of thing. But it's important to know this one because you work with a lot of rectangles, and it's just pretty easy to remember. The A is the area of our section, and the D we'll get to in a second. So we split up this problem here into different sections. Here we have section one, here we have section two, and section three. It asks for the moment of inertia of the beam's cross-sectional area about the y-axis. About the y-axis. So it's important to remember, even though this says base times height, it depends what you're rotating it about. So if you're rotating about the y-axis, this becomes the new base, and this becomes the new height. Right? This is now the base. And now this is the height when dealing with this equation. So let's get right into it. Let's look at section one. The base of section one now is 30, and the height is 200. So we're going to write that down as 30 times 200 to the third over 12. So now the area is just base times height. So that's going to come out to be 6,000. And then the D is tricky. The D is the distance between the centroid of our specific section we're dealing with and whatever you're rotating it about. So for example, since we're rotating about the y-axis, we're going to look at the centroids this way. Since it's just a rectangle, it's just going to be half of the height, right? So you have here 200. So our centroid for section 1 is just going to be 100. And since we're rotating about the y-axis, the d, the distance between the centroid of our section and whatever we're rotating about, is simply just 100 for this specific case. So that's 100 squared. And now if you compile all that together, it's going to give you 8 times 10 to the 7th. And don't forget your units. Since it's in millimeters, for moment of inertia, it's going to be whatever they give you, whatever you're working with. So in this case, millimeters, it's going to be to the 4th. So this is the moment of inertia for section 1 about the y-axis. Let's go ahead and write that up here, clean this up, and work on section 2. So now let's take a look at section 2. So the base of our section 2 is 140, and the height is 30. So let's go ahead and write that down, 140 for the base times the height of 30. That's to the third divided by 12, plus our area, which is just base times height, comes out to be 4,200. And then our D is the centroid of 2 this way, right? So it's 30, the height is 30. The height divided by 2, because it's a rectangle, is right here. So it's just 15 between the centroid of our section and whatever we're rotating about. So the D is now just going to be 15, and square that. And then when you compile all this together, it's going to give you 1.26 times 10 to the 6. And don't forget your units, which here in this case is millimeters to the 4th. There you go. That's number 2. We have to work on number three, and then we'll add them all up together. Let's clean this up and check out three. So now that we have our section one and our section two, let's take a look at section three. So the base of section three is going to be 30, and the height is going to be 100. So let's write that in, 30 for the base, and the height's going to be 100. So that's to the third, divided by 12. Now the area is just base times height, so that's going to give us 3,000. And the D is the distance between our centroid, whatever we're rotating about. In this case, it's half the height, and the height is this way. So it's 100 for the height, so it would just be 50. So our D is going to be 50. Don't forget to square that. And our 3, or this entire thing, if you compile the number, it's going to come out to be 1.0 times 10 to the 7th millimeters to the 4th. Now all you have to do to get your final answer is add 1, add 2, and then add 3, add them all together to get your full moment of inertia for the cross section of this beam about the y-axis. And that comes out to be 9.13 times 10 to the 7th millimeters to the 4th. 
And there you go. There's your answer.